what is going on gamers it is joke over here in state 522 i have been putting this video off for quite some time but per some of the people's requests i will do it so today without further ado i bring you a video on hero formations and i'm only in this video going to talk to you guys about normal orange hero formations because this is where we need to start i want to make sure i'm um making videos for the younger players as well. And by younger, I mean like newer states, younger bases. So I hope you find this helpful. Without further ado, let's go ahead and start. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is information that's already out there. And my kind of quote unquote consensus is going to be um, some of what I've learned through this game and some of what I've learned through other people and I will leave obviously those links in the description below but check this out if I can scroll to it <clears throat> okay so over here there is a huge and super important document that Priam uh, from state 341 put together a while back and he keeps um, editing um, so if you go to lsstips.ca you will find this last shelter survival uh, hero development guide and it explains to you everything look at this unit choice hero attributes the skills the skill ranges um, the battle dynamics the hero analytics the priorities the synergy synergy of heroes not all heroes work together and then his conclusion um, so i've learned uh, quite a bit actually from this document alone and i will reference back to it from time to time um, long story short, your hero formation is going to be dependent on what you are doing if you are attacking or you're defending and what units you're using. Check this out. There are 74,000 different permutations of APC computations. Not all of them are useful. That is a fact. That is a fact. Not all heroes work good together. So I guess since I'm primarily using shooters, let's talk about shooters first. <clears throat> we can go over here and see all of the shooters we have. The shooter heroes we have. Let's see. Hmm. Oh look, they, they give us another one, the Undertaker. That's great. So I'm missing the Forsaken One, Warhound, Reaper, and Razor. I've had both Reaper and Razor and the Forsaken One before, but I decided to split those to try out different heroes. You should always be experimenting i want to try to drag this thing around so that you guys know where i'm where i'm pointing so razor he is a vehicle only hero if you pair him with anything else he will not work you can always click on him and you can click on all these skills down here to see see this first skill if you look up here it tells you all about it it's a it's a combat skill its effective range is four and it will target two random enemy squads within that effective range of four. And let's talk about effective range for a minute before we get too far into it. Oops. So what I'll need to do is actually go back to one of my battle reports. Um, let's see. We can do this one. This was a great one. This was a channeler. They came into our state and I pounded them. But anyways, if you don't know, you can see the, the battle reports up in this top right hand corner. If you click that, if you click that play button right there, it'll actually play it out for you. So let's go ahead and play this out. Right, so as they're playing, wow. Okay, let's not go five, let's go one, one speed so I don't confuse everybody. Well, that didn't work out. Let's try it again. <laughs> okay, so if you notice, whoops, there are one, two, three rows on each side. One, two, three. If your hero has an effective range of one and he's in the back, that means he can only hit one in front of him. So it would be a bad idea. Man, this is not working out. Let's try this one more time. Go back. Let's 
go to another one. Let's go to the last one. So again, there's one, two, three, four, five, six rows. If this is me, this is technically my back row, my middle row, my front row. This is their front row, their middle row, their back row. If my front row has a skill range of one, I can move one forward. If my front row has a range of two, I have the possibility of going one, two forward. I hope you're following. If my back row has a range of five, I can go one, two, three, four, five. So I have chances of hitting any of, of the enemy squ squads. Doesn't mean I will, it just depends on my skill. If I have a range of two, which is pretty common sometimes depending on the hero, and I'm here in the middle of my squad, I can go one and two. So even though I have a range of two, it only allows me to hit the front because I'm in the middle. Now, if you have a range of two and your attack can hit multiple enemy squads, you will only hit one out of those multiple enemy squads. So I hope this makes sense. There's a lot of confusion here. I don't know those. I know these. Um, this war is like kind of confusing us, anyways. But I hope that makes sense, right? So remember, this. <laughs> your front rows, your front row heroes, your middle rows, and your back rows. Technically, all of your heroes, technically, for the best opportunity to, to attack any enemy squad, technically, should be four or five. But you can get away with a skill range of five that should always be in the back. A skill range of four or three would be good here. And then a skill range of above two, ideally, would be in here. Unfortunately, say for instance, my guy, he only has a range of two, so he can only hit two in the enemy, two of the enemy squads. That's all right. He's in, he's in the front. Um, he's more of a support hero for my alternative heroes, anyways. But let's kind of start talking about some of these heroes. So, as Priam says, I agree with him in uh, in in most aspects. We can go ahead and co check back his uh, document that he did for us. So. Fighters, shooters, vehicles. I said we're going to talk about shooters first. Technically, Reaper, Shooter Man, and Iron Guard are going to be the best, quote-unquote, formation for your shooters. And here's why. Let's see. So he said Reaper, Shooter Man, and Iron Guard. Let's talk about Reaper first. Reaper is a siege hero. So he actually has a buff that is active when... Let's see... If we can go down to, I believe it's this one here. If you look at his leadership skill, nope, not that one. I think it's his awaken. There we go. If he has a 25% siege might buff. So keep this in mind that it will only be active when you're sieging. This hero's buff, this 25% buff in Reaper, if your base is getting attacked, does not work so i don't necessarily agree that reaper is going to be the best hero for all purposes but if you are attacking say you attack with shooters and you're using a lot of speed ups reaper would be a very good um hero to attack and he would be a great hero to put in front because he has a fairly um long range Going back to the combat skills and your ability to look at them. So check this out. So he has a combat skill right here. Its effective range is two, and it can hit ra uh, one random enemy squad within the effective range. So he'll be in the front. Technically, he can hit two of the enemy squads. Um, two of the enemy squads. So the front or the middle of their squad. He has a 55% chance to deal 357% damage. 55% is a pretty good um, probability. Chances are one out of every two times he's going to attack. And he attacks for a decent amount of damage. So he is not bad. His second 
combat skill has an effective range of three. So technically, he could hit all the way back into that last squad, that last enemy squad. Now, if you'll notice too, his target is two random enemy squads with an effective range. His chances are 40, a little bit low, 241, not terrible, but not great. So he can technically, from the front row, hit any of the enemy, enemy squads. However, if he was in the middle row, he would only be able to hit to the middle. His, his, his limit is the middle. If he was in the middle of your squad, his limit would be the middle of the enemy squad. So he would still likely be able to be okay in the middle and still hit two r random enemy squads within the effective range. It really wouldn't be random at that point, though. It would just be the front and the back. So that's good. And then his last skill has an effective range of five. So him being in the front, that means he'll be able to attack any of the enemy squads. Now, if he was in the back, this skill would work. But the problem is that this skill wouldn't. So you lose a 55% chance to deal to deal 357 damage every single turn. Catching catching uh what I'm picking down putting down. So his target is also three random enemy squads within the effective range. One turn's prep, 40% chance to do 282 damage to three enemy squads within the effective range. So as long as he's in the front, I mean, in this case, it doesn't matter for his last skill what position he's in in your APC, but regardless, he has a 40% chance to do that kind of damage to all squads. Um, keep in mind, it is a one turn prep. So if you, and I like to do the math this way, there's realistically a 20% chance. So it takes one turn to prep and then after that turn, so you're talking about two turns, 40% chance. I like to consider it maybe like 20% chance per per round to do that damage. Um, kind of just weird the way I think of it, but it, it is what it is. So he is a middle or for the best optimization because of this skill right here, he is a frontline, also middle hero. <clears throat> Next up, shoot a man and iron guard. So let's talk about Iron Guard first. He's the easy one. Iron Guard is shooter specific. And if you look at his skill over here, um, I believe all of his skills have an effective range of five. So there, no, it's four, it's five, four, and five. So this range is five, this one is four, this one is five. One turn prep, 50% chance to do 641% damage to the enemy squad. And he can only, if you see, he can only, the requirement to use him is one hero is using or leading shooters. He will not be effective. So whereas Razor is a vehicle hero, he's only going to be um, effective with vehicles. Iron Guard is only going to be effective with, with shooters as well. So there's about a 25% chance. Or if you look at it the other way, one, one turn, a 50% chance to do 641% damage. It's about every every other turn um, you could do this skill. And his second one, 50% chance, so every other turn, ideally, to do 136% damage to two random enemy squads within range, 30% bonus damage to own squad, right? So when he triggers this, he's going to have a 30% damage bonus to his own squad, meaning that'll go from 136 to 166. Also notice too, he has an effective range of four. He could be a middle and or back hero. I like him in the middle for what I have, it works very well. Two random enemy squads within effective range, right? So damage to two random enemy squads. So if he's in the middle, this skill could work for uh, one, two, three, four. It could, so it could work all the way into the middle of the enemy squad. So. I, I don't want to sit here and explain every single combat skill of every single hero, um, but I think you guys get the idea. I want to speed things up and don't take too long on this video. Um, so let's just do that. Skill range of five. He can hit from anywhere, the front, uh, middle, or back of your APC. Technically, he could hit any of the enemy squads. This should make sense. If you have questions with this, go ahead and check out Priam's 
um, right up. So Militant Shoot a Man Dawn Guardian, Reaper Shoot a Man Iron Guard for shooters, and for vehicles Razor Shoot a Man Dawn Guardian. I'm preferenced. Uh, I'm not necessarily preferenced to Dawn Guardian. He 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 hits when he hits, but he's also he sometimes he doesn't hit. So. I don't know really what I would replace him with because Shooter Man is also a, a range five hero as well. All, all of these would be good. So there's also one more I want to talk about too. So you could do, um, let's see, take all my peoples out. And let's see. <clears throat> so four shooters, my ideal combination would be Iron Guard. You put him in the middle and shoot a man and or you could even do Don Guardian. If you're doing Don Guardian, that would be good if you're defending. If you're attacking, you could do the Reaper Iron Guard shoot a man or Reaper shoot a man Iron Guard. I encourage you to try this. It's a very offensive and aggressive um, formation. So you could also do, if you have it, and it's all going to be based on what you have and what you don't have. You know, if you don't have Reaper, Dawn Guardian could be a good replacement for him. This is a very aggressive setup as well. So you'd have Dawn Guardian, shoot a man, Iron Guard. Or, where is he? You could do, still, if I can find him, Destroya. You could do Destroya, shoot a man, Iron Guard. Or, Destroya, Dawn Guardian, Iron Guard. My preference would be the shoot a man because he has a skill that's pretty much guaranteed to hit almost every single time. But I say destroya as well is because of his this skill, artillery strike, one turn prep, 60% chance to do 646% with a skill range of three. So if he's in the front, you could hit all you could hit any of the enemy squads, right? But this one right here too. So 30% chance to deal 441% damage to one enemy squad within range and suppress them unable to take actions for one turn so he is a suppressor and he suppresses them so much that they really can't do anything for one turn as well as destroy i don't have him to show you but forsaken one he is one of the best suppressors for normal orange heroes you have Forsaken One, Destroyer, and Arsenal. They all suppress. Forsaken One is really good, actually. If you did Forsake... Let's see. If you did Forsaken One, right here, Shoot a Man, Iron Guard, that would be good. Or Forsaken One, uh, Dawn Guardian, Iron Guard, either. I'd be preference to either trying... Um, I'd be preference to either trying uh, Forsaken One, Shoot a Man, Iron Guard, or um, Reaper if I was attacking, or even Dawn Guardian as well. So that would be what I would do for shooters. For vehicles, I would do, and I don't have him to show you, but I would do Razor. And then you could go shoot a man and Don Guardian. Now Razor, let's go ahead and look at him. Let's check out his effective skill ranges. So Razor, he has a skill range of four right there. A skill range of four right there. And a skill range of three. So if he was in the middle, technically, he could hit the front row with this skill, and he only targets one random enemy squad, so he would target the front row, which is okay, because if the front row um, gets creamed, then the, the units will typically lose morale, and that's good for you if your enemy loses morale. So technically, you could do... Uh, oops. You could do Razor... Shoot a man, Don Guardian, or Forsaken One, Razor, Don Guardian, 
or Forsaken One, Razor, shoot him. So there's a lot of options as you're finding out. Let me turn these notifications off, one second. All right, we're back. So I had to turn on Do Not Disturb. Those messages were getting annoying. So basically we have Reaper who can be put in the front or the middle. You could do uh, Forsaken One because he silences. You could do Reaper because he's vehicle dependent and uh, then shoot a man or Forsaken One, um, sh shoot uh, Reaper, Don Guardian. My preference, well, it just depends on what you have really. You can't, you know, beggars can't be choosers. If you only have regular and orange heroes, just use what you have. If you have um, Forsaken One, give him a shot. In the duels, um, you'll see, you know, week on week, what they do and if they're more effective than each other so just m m remember to keep experimenting is what i'm trying to say i'd be preference trying forsaken one it also depends on what you use primarily you know you could even do um reaper if you're attacking with vehicles a lot you could do reaper or um forsaken one reaper shoot a man you could do forsaken one reaper dawn guardian I ran for a while, I ran Shoot a Man, Reaper, and then I had a Season 1 hero, the Flash, that I used too. But I'd be preference to trying um, Reaper, Shoot a Man, and Forsaken 1, or, um, I'm sorry, Forsaken 1, Reaper, Shoot a Man, or even Destroya. Um, right now in my vehicles, I run Destroyer, I run um, the Flash, he's a support hero, and I run as well, Captain Ivanov. Captain Ivanov is a beast. Um, but Forsaken 1 silences, he's a pretty good hitter too. Um, Flash supports and then Ivanov. That's what I run though, but if you don't have Season 1 heroes, that's fine. Or Season 2 heroes, that's fine. You now know what you should run. Now, if we're talking about fighters, what I would do is we have a fighter-specific hero named Militant. Militant... Let's see if we can pull him up. No tent has an effective range of two. What does that tell you? Well, he really needs to be in the front for this skill to um, be effective. And he should be in the front because this squad, I'm sorry, this, this targets two random enemy squads within the effective range. What does that mean? That means, well, if he's in the middle and he has an effective range of two, he can technically only hit... The first, uh, the first enemy squad. So you'll miss out on one full attack. One full attack, right? You don't want that. So he needs to be his almost his only option, at least to utilize that skill. Let's see about this this skill. So another one, two, and then an effective range of four right there. Four. Going back to this one. Whoops. Two right here. So militant needs to be in front. That means it's going to be rough for you to use, rough, rougher for you to use, um, Reaper. So, I'm sorry, Forsaken One. So you could do, like, um, uh, Militant, Reaper, or, and, Shoot a Man, or Militant, Reaper, Don Guardian, or... Militant, shoot a man, Don Guardian. Let's see what Primo says for fighters. Militant, shoot a man, Don Guardian. I like that because Don Guardian and shoot a man, they have ranges of four and five. So they're going to hit pretty much any of the enemy squads. Now, if this is the only thing you have, it, it will work, you know. If you're defending, this would be a good to, good one too. If you're attacking, this would be a good one too. Also, if you don't have shoot a man or um, <clears throat> Don Guardian, you could always replace. You could do... The, again the reaper i'm sorry the, <laughs> there's too many heroes i'm getting confused guys you could do the militant reaper iron Ma iron guardian oh my gosh dawn guardian you see now i can't even talk or you could do the uh, militant reaper shoot -a man as well um you could try arsenal he's a suppressor he has an effective range of three so technically, this skill would work still for two random enemy squads. Let's see if this next one would. His range of three, two, and two random enemy squads, um, and then the effective range of three as well. Technically, um, because he, check this one out, 30% chance to damage, to do 400% damage. 
uh, to one enemy squad within range to suppress them, unable to take actions for one turn. So there's no prep, and it's 30%. It's not, you know, it's not super, super high, but it's better than nothing. So you could do, you know, one out of every two or three turns, technically, um, you'll be able to suppress them for another turn. So it helps. It gives, you know, gives you that time to put in some extra damage to the enemy. But what I'm saying is you could, technically, because he is, whoops, he is, um, he has a skill range of three, so it would be one, and then the front enemy squad, and then the middle enemy squad. Technically, all of his attacks would still work. You could do militant, arsenal, shoot a man, or militant, arsenal, and Don guardian as well. As long as you don't put Reaper in the back, you're good. As long as you don't put him in the back, you're good. This would be a bad formation. This would be a good formation. Um, this would be a bad formation. This would be a good formation, right? So it's going to take you guys doing a little bit of research too. I mean, we haven't even talked into probabilities of your um, heroes working together too. And then also too, be sure that you are reading your hero's um, bios. And I don't think I actually have... Actually, we can go look at it. Let's see. Oops. So if we go to hero and we can scroll down, we want to check out war, war boss. Um, sorry, warhound and then reaper. I think in warhound it says, right? Oops. Let's read him. Nope, it's not him. So Warhound and either Reaper or Razor actually will not work together. There we go, right here. So you need to be sure you're reading because we talked uh, briefly about hero synergy. Um, there are certain heroes that will not work together and they will kind of um, butt heads. And if they butt heads, you're not going to attack to your full potential. Here's the example with Reaper. Hey, you guys like how he's invisible? That's pretty awesome, huh? So with Reaper, if you read his last paragraph, side note, never mention dogs in front of the Reaper. He doesn't like them or anyone who hangs near. Well, if you're smart, you will realize that Warhound has a dog picture, right? Warhound and Reaper are not going to work together in the same formation. Don't put them in the same formation. And we didn't really talk about Warhound either. If you have him, his skill range is three, two, and three. He will need to be in the front. I don't see many people at this time using Warhound. I see more people using Forsaken and Shoot a Man and Dawn Guardian. Forsaken one, a lot of people use. Um, Forsaken one, Militant, um, Iron Guard, and Razor are very, very common. Um, shoot a man and dawn guardian are common as well so referring back to even priam's guide these are all these are all great so for fighters dawn guardian shoot a man militant for shooters reaper shoot a man iron guard for vehicles sh razor shoot a man dawn guardian um although any of what i just said would work too what priam was going off of is the pure probability to attack the most amount of times and to attack the most uh, squats so a lot of these have high ranges which means you're going to have the potential to attack all of the enemy squads rather than just like the front line you know so anyways i warhound is fine i mean we can see one turn one turn prep 55 percent chance to do 634 percent um, damage to an enemy squad within range one turns prep 55 percent 643 not bad not bad 35 percent chance to do 540 damage and then you do the blunt blade effect lowering 30 percent might for two turns to the enemy and then 35 percent to do 420 percent damage causing weakened effect negative 20 percent damage for one turn so not great though it's a one turn prep at 55 percent and then it's a 35 percent and a 35 percent that's not that great that's probably why i don't see many people running around but if you have him use him keep experimenting guys keep experimenting um there was one thing i was going to say too 
And I've noticed this, that his second skill and his last skill, what do you see in the pictures, right? A vehicle. Now, I don't know if this was intentional or not intentional, and I have not done this research, but something to consider too is if you're doing fighters, you know, he's, it says in his description, one hero is leading any units, but I would be very curious to see if he's more effective with vehicles or if he's more effective with shooters and or fighters. So maybe you guys can let me know in the comments what you think about that. I'd be very curious to know, is it a coincidence? Is it not? Technically, he can lead any units, but is he gonna be more effective with vehicles? Because there are a lot of vehicles in his pictures. So tell me what you guys think in the comments. So I hope that, let's see, let's see if I miss anything before we uh, uh, take off this video. So there's Undertaker. Actually, I haven't seen her yet. She just got released to us. Let's see. She's going to be 50% chance to do 402% damage to a single enemy target with a range of 4. Dang, that's pretty good. She's going to give us 30% resistance. That's standard for normal oranges. 30% might. What the heck? Um, oh, she's a zombie hero. Wah. 30% increased might and 30% damage. I'm sorry, bonus might against zombies. She has a 35% chance to do... 247% damage to two random enemy squads within a range, lowering their resistance by 30% for two turns with an effective skill range of four. And then her last one is going to be increase 30% damage for the squad the hero is in. So, yeah, overall, not bad, but I have a feeling it's a skill effective range of one, which is going to be fine because it's uh, only for her squad. Let's see what she happens what she gets when she's awakened. So it's 20% uh, might, 10% resistance, 250%. Um, okay, so, you know, it's pretty standard. I'm not going to say that. Probably not a lot of people were going to use her in uh, normal war APCs. Um, one thing, too. One more thing. So we did Razor. We did Reaper. We, did, we talked about Forsaken One. We talked about Warhound. We talked about... Um, Shoot a man, destroy a Don Guardian. Pretty much for the back two, always shoot a man and Don Guardian are gonna pair pretty well together. They're they're uh, they're damagers. Um, you could always do Reaper. You could always do uh, uh, Iron Guardian. Oh my goodness, Iron Guard if you're doing shooters. Arsenal would be okay to try. My in my encouragement to you guys would just be to continue continually to try. The new uh, new setups if you remember here we talked about it in the beginning of this video there are 74,000 different permutations of apc commutations and obviously there's less with just normal normal orange heroes but what i'm saying is to just experiment to to look at your skill ranges look at your skills your probabilities and uh you know continue to experiment um, if you want to build an AP feed APC for defense, you're going to want to look at, say, um, a hero with, you know, who's awakened and has more resistance, uh, more resistance than might. Resistance would be good to be putting up front as well. So it gets kind of complicated, but generally I've given you guys, you know, three, four or five different um, um, loadouts per se for, you know, for different units vehicles for shooters and for fighters so i hope this helps guys um drop a comment if you um, have any suggestions i'm still learning uh this is my first ever hero video so you know maybe i messed something up i hope i didn't i hope it, i was pretty clear and you guys understood what i was saying i tried to drag this little cursor around too so you guys could um see a little bit more what i was talking about and what i was doing um i hope that helps if I miss something, again, leave a comment. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, no.